Hey everyone and welcome to a YouTube live show. It's been a while, it's been a while, um, but today I am very, very excited because I am not alone. I am with my co-author, Mariana Jarpe. And Hello. together we have spent the last two years and a little bit more than that to write this book, The Ultimate Guide to How to Fit and Sew Your Own Knit Clothes. So, this uh, live session tonight, we're going to talk about the content of this book and share some really interesting tips that I think you will love that you won't find in any, uh, any other sewing and fitting books because we are just talking about what it's like to make pattern adjustment and make beautiful fitting and well-sewn knit clothes. So this is a very special book and it's a very thick book. It's 260 pages because apparently there's a lot of things to say about <laughs> this stuff and Another reason why the book is so thick is because we really wanted to make sure that the, the layout is very airy with a lot of white spaces because we don't want to like overload you with information. So as you can see here, it's a very, very visual book. So it's not a lot of text. There's just a lot of illustrations. So uh, I just want to say hi to the people in the chat now. We have Laventiera. Good evening from the cold Netherlands. Good evening. We also we are in the cold Sweden. <laughs> it's, it's definitely not summer anymore here as well. And we also have Aziba. Hello. So nice to see you and welcome to this chat. Um, if you have any questions about the topic that we are going to cover tonight, just drop some uh, question in the comment section and we will do our, our best to answer them. And we will just keep going and share. So if you're wondering what this live is about, well, it's partly about the book, but most of all, it's basically like a mini masterclass in in pattern fitting and sewing knit. So I know that regardless if you already have the book or if you haven't bought the book, you, you will have, get lots of wonderful information nudges from this live. Uh, but first of all, I, I know many of you already know me because uh, I've been on YouTube for a while. <laughs> and if you haven't, uh, welcome. My name is Johanna. I am um, uh, a sewing uh, teacher, you could say, and uh, I have been a sewing content creator since uh, for 15 years. And my YouTube channel teaches you a lot about how to sew with knits. And I've also written four books in total about sewing. The first one was about sewing activewear. Then it was about uh, using the cover stitch machine. And then I wrote a book about sewing jeans. And now, of course, this book I, that I wrote together with Maliana is how about doing pattern fitting and sewing knit garments. So welcome, Maliana. And um, who are you? Thank you, thank you. Happy to be here. Uh, my name is Malena, and I work as a, I've been working as a pattern maker for uh, about uh, fifteen uh, years now. And uh, I mostly worked with uh, with knitwear, uh, jersey, jersey garment, knitted garment. Uh, it's it's really become a passion of mine, and I really I really enjoyed it. As uh, so over the last like five years, I've been doing um, it as a, a freelance pattern maker and. Um, before that, I was employed by uh, H&M and uh, Arket. Um, so then I then I used to live in Stockholm. Now we, then we moved up to Umeå, and I became a freelancer. And then I can do these kind of projects as well, which is uh, really fun. We really this is my first sewing book. I have a few PDF uh, patterns, uh, but uh, yeah, this first time ever that I can call myself an author, <laughs> and that feels a little bit special to me. <laughs> Yeah, it's been, I'm so happy that I, I was able to get you on this uh, project with me because uh, as some of you already know, my speciality is with sewing. As I said, I teach a lot about how to sew with knits and using techniques that makes it much easier because there's a lot of struggles when it comes to sewing with knits. But my expertise is not pattern fitting. So when me and Mariana met online, we're both based in Sweden. Uh, I live in Gothenburg, which is in the southern part of Sweden. Um, but when we met online and Malena contacted me because you were holding a sewing class and you wanted to uh, get a copy of my first book, Sewing Activewear. And that was many years ago now. Uh, and then when I had this idea, because I feel like sewing with knits comes with some special challenges and pattern fitting with knits that aren't really addressed in most traditional sewing books. And for instance, if you get, there are lots of great books about how to do pattern fitting and pattern alterations, but there, these books tend to talk primarily about wovens, I would say about 90, 95, and sometimes 100% of the content is about woven. And as we all know, 
So in knit fabrics, it's a little bit different because sometimes you deal with things like negative ease, for instance. So the actual pattern is smaller than your body. Uh, so there, and you don't have lots of seams that you can use to adjust. So I wanted to have someone who knew all that stuff. And when I met Maliana, I know that she was my person because as Maliana says, she has spent most of her working life as a pattern maker. Uh, for the big brands, I'm sure many of you in, in the world know about H&M. It's a global um, fashion chain. It, it has a lot of subsidiaries such as Arket and Kos. And, uh, so, Maliana, maybe you're wearing a t-shirt perhaps that Maliana <laughs> made the pattern for because H&M is uh, global. It's everywhere. So, so that's also very exciting to get your professional perspective on this. So that's why we decided to make this a joint venture in the book. So it's the book is both about with sewing techniques and then the pattern alterations. So what we're going to do, I just want to say there's so many people in the chat now. Uh, so nice to see everyone. I love doing this live. And also, if you're dropping in a little bit late enough, please uh, don't hesitate to ask comments, uh, ask questions about the things that we're going to talk about tonight, because this live will be about how to uh, fit and sew knit clothes. So we're actually going to it's going to be like a mini browsing uh, through the book, and we're going to share some really cool tips that you might not be aware of when it comes to sewing with knits and fitting knits. Uh, and of course, if you have gotten the book already, it's available um, globally on Amazon in most parts. Canada is not yet up, I think, but it's coming hopefully. Uh, and you can also get the ebook uh, in my own shop, shopdelastitch.com. Uh, and also the Kindle version as well. So I think you should be able to get the book in most parts of the world. And if not, it's probably coming. Uh, and we have gone some really great, uh, we, we released it this Tuesday, Tuesday 7th. So it's only five days. Uh, and so far, only five star reviews. <laughs> and, and if you have already gotten the book or you decide to get the book, and we will really, really be grateful if you want to review the book as well, because it helps a lot to get more people to find the book and uh, find help and useful information in the book. So yeah, thank you everyone who has bought the book and thank you everyone for being here. So so now we're gonna do a little bit of, um, the, the book is divided into five different chapters. And um, the first chapter is fabric. Yeah, because it all starts with the fabric, right Maliana? And yes. why? Why are knits a little bit different compared to woven, you would say? Um, well, I mean, it's made in a different way. Woven is obviously, it's woven together, so it doesn't stretch. But it, it, it might have a little bit stretch, but uh, it doesn't have like this stretch that, uh, that a knitted garment has. Uh, knits it stretch a lot more, which is great. We love it. Uh, it's so comfortable to wear, uh, but it also... Um, the fabric is alive when you work with it. It moves, it stretches out, it might not come back to its original shape. But you really need to take, uh, take in consideration both when sewing and also when, um, when choosing a pattern and when choosing the fabric. Because the pattern might be great, the fabric might be great, but it might not be a good combination. So you really, it's really, really important when you have um, a pattern for, for a knitted garment that you really read the instruction like, what kind of fabric do they recommend? What kind of, uh, how stretchy can the fabric be? Because if it's uh, too stiff um, fabric, um, it might not add work at all with uh, a certain pattern, or you might need to size it up like one or two sizes or something to, to compensate for the, for the lack of stretch. But, uh, but yeah, the stretch is the um, one key benefit with, uh, with knitted uh, fabric, I would say. Yeah. And that's probably why so many of us like to both uh, wear and sew knit clothes because they're so kind and comfortable and forgiving. Um, and one uh, very important nugget from the book that we talk about is uh, when it comes to fabric is that unlike woven fabrics, um, you, you shouldn't measure, when you're cutting knit fabrics, you shouldn't measure from the edge of the fabric or the selvage as we talk about. Because when we, when we learn sewing and cutting fabrics, right? In woven, we are told that we should measure with the measuring tape from the edge of the fabric until the grain line on the pattern. And that will ensure that the pattern pieces are cut straight. But, Malena, when we're sewing with knits, 
why shouldn't we measure? Sorry, now I'm dropping everything. Why shouldn't we measure from the um, fabric edge? Yeah, I mean, on a woven fabric, it's basically on the millimeter. Like it's really like you can you can work from the sandwich edge, but. Um, and knitted fabric doesn't have really a salvage edge in that sense because uh, when uh, when a knitted fabric is made, it's knitted on a circular knitting machine. So it's actually a tube. It's not a flat uh, fabric when you get it. It's actually a tube and uh, then it's cut open. Um, usually it is pretty straight cut, but it's, you know, it might be a little bit like, yeah, a little bit off. Um, and then they, um, um, the edge is always curling, you know how it is with uh, most edges, especially on uh, like a single regular uh, jersey. Um, it's always curling, so that then they have like um, they they add some glue or something, so uh, so the edge stays. Um, and this, of course, it's yeah, it's really tricky to measure from that edge. Then, um, so that's why we always recommend to to find the. Now I'm losing the word, English the word for it, but I think it's like a uh, yeah. it's called like yeah. the, the rib um, that uh, goes along the grain line. Uh, find find that instead, and uh, you follow that uh, um, the grain line on that one. It's uh, it's going to be so much more accurate. Yeah, so you need to do that. And I also have a little bit of a tip here, and uh, I should highly recommend now that we're on YouTube. Do check out a video I did a while ago where I talk about how to cut knit fabrics because they will go more, much more in depth about this. But one trick is because sometimes only if you're cutting in like a bodice, then you might have a straight line. But for instance, a sleeve, it's like shaped like that. So what I do when I'm cutting a sleeve is that I, let me see here, hmm. uh, to make sure, ensure that, the, that everything is aligned, what I do actually is that I fold the pattern piece, and then I look for that vertical rib formation that will ensure that the pattern piece is cut straight. Then I fold it along the grain line, and then I just fold back the piece again, so it's straight like that. And that I find that this little tip just makes everything so much easier when you're dealing with these non-straight uh, sides of the pattern piece. Um, so I highly recommend to check out that video as well if you're a little bit confused about this. But that's a great tip of of uh, you know finding those straight line. And I also personally, because sometimes it can be difficult um, to find um, if the fabric is really soft and slippery and you're cutting two layers of the sleeves, uh, you might look straight on the, the upper piece, but you have no idea to ensure how the lower piece might be because it can, it can be a little bit tricky because the fabric kind of moves. It's a little bit away from the fold. Um, so I personally have found it much better to cut uh, each sleeve piece as a single piece and just remember to mirror the second piece and do the same method as I've shown you that helps so much so I highly recommend check out that video um, once you watch uh, this live because it's really really those little things make a huge difference um, and you also have another great tip in the book Malena that we talk about which is um, uh, stripes yeah and stripe fabric it's really it's I mean it's great when you knit because um it's uh, it's really usually beautifully done and um but the tricky thing is that uh, as i said the the fabric is made on a circular knitting machine and when it goes around one uh, one turn it, it it's not one row it uh, knits it might be i don't know exactly how many rows it needs but it might be 12 24 or something so it's like every single turn it takes it gets slightly tilted um so the grain line and the stripes they are never like 90 degree perpendicular um it's always a little bit off so then it's like should you follow the grain line or should you actually follow the stripes and i usually re recommend to follow the stripe because then it's obviously gonna be more visual like it's going to be looking more uh, straight when you when you wear it uh, but yeah that, that that's a little bit tricky actually and the only only time you should not really follow follow the grain line yeah i hope you found these tips really useful but these are the kind of things that i know that when i started sewing with knits there, there were no uh, like information out there about this stuff so I mean, that's one of the 
passions that we really want to make sure with this book that, that we cover all those stuff that you that aren't that are basically different from from sewing sewing with woven fabric. So there are a lot of little tricks that will ensure that your result will get much better. And also, I should plug another video. I did a video last week about um, sewing a t-shirt, uh, sewing instructions where I used a particularly striped fabric. And um, I also talk a little bit about that as well uh, in that video about cutting fabric. So hopefully you will find these resources really helpful. And of course, we're just barely scratching the surface now because you have so we have so much information in this book. And so that was chapter number one. Um, and then the second chapter is about fitting. And here we talk about all the principles behind how to adjust the patterns. Um, so Malena, you talk about why it's so important to always adjust at the seam line and not the edge of the pattern uh, if the pattern has seam allowances. Could you explain why that is so important? Yeah, I mean, when you sew, it's uh, the finished garment will actually be from the from the seam line. So when you measure a pattern, for example, I want to see how big it is compared to your body, it's from the seam line you should measure, not the seam allowance edge. Um, and when you, for example, if you slash and spread the pattern or uh, pivot in, in it somehow, um, always do it from the seam line edge, um, not the seam allowance edge. Um, we have made pictures, uh, illustrations of it, like what will happen otherwise. That if you do it from the seam allowance edge, um, there you see it. Um, the seam line will actually be might be longer or a little bit shorter if you uh, overlap it or if you uh, slash it open. And then the seam line won't match up, for example, here with the with the sleeve anymore. Um, but if you pivot it from the seam line edge, then the original armhole here, for example, it will still the length will still be intact. Um, so that's why it's so important to always work from the seam line. And if uh, if the pattern doesn't have seam lines, it only has seam allowance edge, um, then you can easily draw it. J just like check. Uh, check the instructions, how, how wide is the seam allowance edge, and then you add uh, um, a small line for where the seam line is. So that is really, really, really important if you do any changes. I mean, if you make uh, the legs longer or shorter, then the end result will still be the same, regardless if you do it from the seam allowance edge or seam line. But when you have those curved lines, since the curve is, uh, the length is gonna be different on the seam allowance edge and the seam line edge, those are different lengths. Um, so that's why it's so important to work on the seam line edge. So you still keep the, the original length. We have more control of how much you want to add or remove. So you add or remove the same thing on the both on the armhole and the sleeve. Um, otherwise it might might be different. So that's really, as a pattern maker, I always, I never work with the seam allowance until the very last thing. I always only work on the seam with the seam lines and do it everything completely done. And then the final, final thing I do is I just add the seam seam allowance um, to to the pattern. But that's that for me the last thing that I I'll, I always add. Mm. And that's a fun fact. Um, it's a little bit different now, but it was for a long time it was a big difference between European patterns because they hardly ever had the seam allowance added. So you always had to add that manually, which, you know, it wasn't always so fun, <laughs> but you did that. You know, for instance, all the Berta style patterns, all the, um, the Swedish brands pattern, they never had a, any seam allowance. So, you, But the good part was that, as Malena says, you were able to get a clear idea of the seam line. So you could always alter the pattern. And then when you're done, you add the seam allowance and also you could have the opportunity to add the, the the seam allowance that you wanted to have, not what the company had decided, because it's also different. We talk a little bit about that in the book as well. It's it's usually quite helpful to not have as wide seam allowance on knits as it is on woven, especially if you're doing stretchy knits. It doesn't really have to be much wider than um, the seam. So I, I personally use uh, between um, six millimeters to one centimeter, which is uh, uh, one quarter of an inch to uh, three eighths of an inch, I think. Whereas on woven fabrics, um, it's usually 1.5 centimeters, five eight inches. And it's especially curved lines, right? 
trying to sew a sleeve, knit sleeve with a seam allowance of like one and a half centimeter, that can be quite tricky, I would say. Would you agree with me? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I completely agree. And uh, that's also good. This is also the same as, uh, <coughs> as it in with woven that when you when you um, uh, pin the garment, like pin the armhole and the sleeve, remember that it's it's not the seam allowance edge that should match up. It's the seam lines that should match up. So if you have a, a two different curves, like one um, curved in different ways, that always remember it's the seam lines that you want to uh, line up, not the edge, because uh, again, those are going to be the length are going to be different between so, those uh, those two lines. Exactly, exactly. And also, as we all know, the wider the seam allowance, if there's a curve, the the more your right, it's going to look like the, it will be more narrow. But in reality, because you're as far, farther away, the seam edge, the seam allowance edge is from the, the seam line, the, the bigger the difference is going to be. So you always have to make sure that you actually use the seam line. So we talk about this in the book as well, that uh, especially with the sleeves, if you, I know at least older pattern for knits, they usually have this really wide uh, seam allowance, at least the ones that I used to sew with, maybe the, the big four. I would really nice to know if that's the case still, but I have some older knit pattern from such Butterix and Vogue, and they had um, uh, 1.5 centimeters, five, eight inches. Oh, really? uh, and that's really, really difficult to yeah. sew. Mm. Yeah, and it's a little bit wasteful. Like, why would you have that? I mean, one thing if you sew with a regular sewing machine, uh, but you usually sew with uh, an overlocker. Um, so then you cut away the extra fabric anyway. So it doesn't really make sense to have a wider, uh, wider seam allowance. And we talk about this in the book as well. So we show this, uh, if you run into this in all the patterns, especially how to trim it. So you, you, you do the, the more narrow it is. And usually even, even if you're using a sewing machine, you would ideally, because the stretch overlock seams on a sewing machine is usually also about six millimeters to a centimeters wide. So there's no real reason to do that. Um, so that was a bit, uh, you know, talking about all the things like seam allowance and seam lines. I hope you um, uh, would be also really interested to say if you have, um, depending where you are in the world, what have you noticed is the standard seam allowance on the knit patterns they're using? Is it six millimeters? Because I know Yali and those traditional stretch bands, they use six millimeters, one quarter of an inch. I, some use one centimeters and some then use the wider one. So it's very different. So don't make any assumptions. Make sure that you <laughs> you get the right seam allowance because it can vary a lot on knit patterns, more than, than boba fabrics. Um, uh, let me see. So this was the, the with fabric. And we also, the, sec the third chapter, we are moving quickly here, is about tops. And this is by far the uh, longest chapter, I think it's literally about 100 pages. Because <laughs> as I said, if you haven't, uh, no, we talk, like as you can see, this book is thick. It's 260 pages because that's how much information we felt we wanted to share with you. So this is going to be like the ultimate guide that will keep on giving for many years. And even if you do more advanced projects, I know that you will find so much valuable information here. So it's definitely, it's going to be those like a tomb for sewing and fitting knits. Um, and when it comes to top, Malena, you talk about fitting order. Um, and, and there should be like a sequence where you, sh what you should do first and then second. So uh, would you share a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, I would uh, recommend to always start like from the center and work your way out and also from the top to the bottom. Obviously, the ex exception is like if you have a if you know you always need to do a full bust adjustment or always need to do some bigger adjustments, uh, start with that first because you that is going to affect the fit a lot and you're not going to be able to see those like minor fitting issues that might be going on. Uh, but otherwise, always start from in the middle and make your work out and from the shoulders and down. Uh, if you get the I would say focus on getting the shoulders, uh, the fit of the shoulder and arm hole right. Because if you get that fit good, 80% um, of the work is done. Like th this is <laughs> this is the most difficult part to get uh, to get a good fit because the shoulders it controls the balance of the garment, and it uh, 
for example, the bottom, uh, the front, uh, front top might be like hiking up a lot. But that actually, it might be that the inner shoulder is too short and it's pulling everything up. up. So it's really like if you get the balance of the shoulder good and a, and a nice arm hold, like you have, uh, you have done a very good, uh, come very far. Then the rest is just like I would say width. Uh, <laughs> you can quite easily um, add or remove that. But uh, yeah, getting the balance of the shoulder that that's the that's the trickiest part. I would say. Yeah. Because we all have such different shoulder shapes, right? So, for instance, my has a tendency of like I pull up like the front because of my shoulder shape, which is one of one one of many common fitting issues. And we show all the all the different things that can happen over in the shoulder area in this book. And I should also say that we don't just talk about satin sleeves. If you know satin sleeves, those are the the ones that are um, like a curve here with a sleeve. We also talk about um, the other typical sleeve style on for knits, which is the raglan sleeves. And we have a big section about this as well. Um, and uh, so I just want to mention that, but we're going to, before we do that, um, I just want to talk some, because it's so fascinating to work with Maliana because she has taught me so many industry secrets uh, when it comes to pattern making, understanding knit patterns and the difference. So a couple of nuggets that I want to share with you that it was I wasn't familiar with, because Maliana also, if you don't know, I also have sewing patterns that I've designed and I'm wearing my yeah, AV cardigan right now. This is for knits. Uh, it says princess seam, so it's very easy to do a boost adjustment. And underneath I'm wearing my girly top, which is the puff sleeve top made for like soft knit fabrics. Um, and Maliana is, is the pattern maker uh, behind those patterns. And uh, you taught me something that I thought were really fascinating because when you sew with woven fabrics, um, the sleeve cap usually have ease, meaning that the seam line of the sleeve cap is a little bit longer than the actual arm hole. Then, you know, most pattern instruction will show you how to like gather or ease in at the top of the sleeve cap. And if you're sewing like a um, tailored jacket, there might be a lot of ease because for, for the movement and everything. So it's really good to have that ease in, in those cases. But if you, you have that issue with, um, that's for woven fabrics, that you have the sleeve, seam length is longer on the sleeve cap than the armhole. But Maliana taught me that on many knit patterns, the sleeve cap length is actually slightly shorter than the armhole. So it's the opposite. Could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it's uh, exactly as you said, that uh, there is negative ease on the, on the sleeve cap or sleeve head. It's, uh, it's a little bit shorter, so when you attach it, you um, stretch it slightly out. And also like the way of sewing is a little bit different because usually on woven you sew uh, the side seam of the body and then the, um, the arm, and then you sew the armhole. But, uh, but on knitwear, you actually do it the opposite way. Like you, you sew, uh, sew the shoulder and then you, then you uh, show, <laughs> sorry. Uh, sew together the sleeve to the armhole, and then you sew the side seam of the bodice and sleeve in once. Um, so it's uh, that's also one one difference from from woven, and it just gives a little bit uh, just like a nicer figure to the like uh, it lays better, I would say uh, more. Um, uh, yeah, it just looks better when you have a negative ease on uh, on uh, on the knitted uh, pattern. But uh, yeah, so they are different. And I didn't know about this. I didn't learn it in school. So when I came to, because we, you don't talk about uh, knitwear in uh, in school, you only talk about woven. So I actually learned this uh, when I started H&M as an assistant. After a while, I um, oh, I, uh, I learned this. Uh, <laughs> so it was, a, it was a really good information that you learning by doing it. And uh, yeah, it's... Uh, came as a surprise to me as well and now i always i always do it because it's really it it looks nicer i would say yeah and it definitely must and i should also say uh because i <coughs> give uh, both my own patterns and maliana's a pattern maker shameless plug now first of all maliana has her own pattern range i should say so i should definitely start by sharing the screen so you can see um let me see here if i can get this done right so 
Malena has her own set of knit patterns for both joggers and children and some uh, grown-ups. So most of them are knits, right? Yeah. Uh, and um, But what I should say also is that I have sewn so many knit patterns because I, I, I love to work with knits, as you probably know if you follow my channel. And the sleeves have been a constant struggle with so many pattern makers. So when I started to work with Maliana and she drafted the, the patterns for me, they are a dream to sew. Everything goes together beautifully. There's no puckering, there's no gathers. The sleeves just look absolutely beautiful, even though you're new to sewing, because sewing the sleeves can only be a bit tricky, but because they're so well drafted, I have never, and I literally dozens, 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 dozens of tops I have sewn over the years from many different pattern companies. And I think one of the reasons is, of course, as Malena says, there is no ease and also because the shape is so, so good. So that's also, but what to do then if you run into um, a pattern that is uh, for knits that has that kind of extra ease, because I, I, the, I've encountered several patterns that do, then, then we show in the book how to remove that extra ease just to make it easier. And also another thing that Mariana talks about, which is also, I thought, really intriguing, uh, is um, the, uh, the shape of the sleeve cap because not all sleeve caps are created equally. So could you talk a little bit about the pros and cons of having a higher sleeve cap versus a lower sleeve cap and when to use the different type of shapes here? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the bodice and the armhole can actually um, <clears throat> be, be the same, but the, the sleeve head uh, or sleeve cap height can be different. And so with the higher sleeve cap, uh, you have a tighter bicep measurement. Um, and then you get a really nice fit, no drag lines when you have your arm down. And it's really nice, uh, for example, for office wear or something. Like, it looks really nice um, when, uh, when sitting, basically, when, when arms down. But the, co the uh, con side then is uh, that when you lift your arms up, the whole garment will also be lifted up. Um, so that's, of course, not as, yeah, not as good. While if you have a lower sleeve cap, um, that's usually more common with the active wear, sports wear, because a lower sleeve cap means you will have drag lines when you have your arm down. It will not look so nice, um, but the bicep is a bit bigger. And since it's a shorter um, cap height, you can actually move up your arms a lot easier without the whole garment being lifted up. So it's really, it's, um, different uh, depending on what uh, what garment you want what uh, what you are going to do with it um, so you can either it's not that one is good and one is bad it just depends on what uh, what purpose uh, uh, the garment has but yeah there there is uh, there is different and this is something you can uh, do as well uh, if you want to change it like uh, doing a small or big bicep adjustment will change the height of the sleeve cap and then automatically also make the bicep bigger or smaller, depending on uh, how you adjust it. So yeah, so that's a good tip. If you if you think everything is like you have a difficult to move up your arms, then then you want to have a lower, uh, lower sleep cap. Hmm. That's a really, really good tip. Because I think we all have noticed that kind of thing. And also the T-shirt the, the riding up is also very common. Um, Heike, we have a question about the negative ease. Heike says, that's really interesting to hear how much negative ease is in the sleeve cap. And we had discussions about that. You say it depends, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there is no, yeah, um, I would say for like a regular uh, cotton, uh, cotton uh, elastan, cotton uh, spandex jersey, like um, maybe minus one centimeter, one and a half ish. Um, on bigger sizes, maybe slightly more, but uh, between one and one and a half in, in total, I would I would say. And if the fabric is um, the stiffer the fabric, um, the less like the less ease you will have. Um, like um, if it's really stiff, then you basically maybe don't want to have any ease at all. But the stretchier fabric you have, the more ease you can also have. So it it depends a little bit. Yeah. And I would say also here that um, a good thing, like if you if you have a higher sleeve cap, then it's maybe more important. But if you have a lower sleeve cap or a dropped shoulder, for example, I don't I, I still have a little bit negative ease on a dropped shoulder, but I don't have it uh, as much at all since it's then the shoulder is actually placed away from your actual shoulder. So it's really it, it depends. 
Yeah, it's always it's the same, really. You can get away with a lot more loose fitting um, <coughs> tops, and with uh, you know with a lower sleeve cap, it, everything becomes a little bit trickier when you have more shaping. Basically, for a lot of stuff, becomes fitting as well. And uh, we also have um, yes, I talked about the instructions for removing. We also have, as Marina says, it depends, but we have a rough formula for how to calculate this and, and how to make adjustment depending on the fabric. That's also covered in the book. So, for instance, Shari says, I see a lot of t-shirts based on an old pattern. I saw, a lot, I saw a lot of t-shirts based on an old pattern. I will use your new book to refine it. That's really exciting to hear because I think if you have your, your re, a great t-shirt um, pattern, you can definitely benefit from understanding these things. So it's not just about pattern alterations, for instance, you know, depending on length and uh, shoulders or your chest. It's also about these kind of nuances that really makes for a nice fitting t-shirt. Um, and I also want to say that, which you also told, now we're going to get super nerdy, but um, on some, especially some knit patterns, they have the, 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 the front, I, say, I can't do mirror, the front and the back sleeve cap is identical. So if you would fold the pattern in half, there will be no difference between the front and the back sleeve cap. And Maliana says that is usually not a good idea, <laughs> right? Why? Yeah, I mean it is. It's a simple simplification of the pattern because uh, since knit, knitted uh, fabric, it is kind of forgiving. So you do it equally because then you don't have to in the industry, for example, you don't have to keep track of what's the right and left shoulders. It's it's a little bit easier, but your body it is different between the front and back. You have your shoulder more tilted to the front so you want to have a difference between the sleeve head and the same thing with the armhole your front uh, well your shoulder is usually more like oh, towards the front compared to the back so then you want to have like that a little bit extra width across the back and you want to have it a little bit more narrower uh, at the front width so that's why i i always oh, recommend to have patterns that uh, smaller in the front width compared to the back and uh, the shoulder the sleeve head should be like tilted a little bit more to the front because your shoulder is basically a little bit more tilted to the front yeah and there's one exception just like you talked about the um, the sleeve cap for instance if the if this is like a very drop shoulder style it doesn't really matter as much right but no no of course because th then the shoulder is actually not at the shoulder anymore it's placed way further um, down on your body so then it doesn't really matter and it's oversized anyway so yeah then it's uh, that's the exception yeah i hope you found these kind of tips useful because i'm trying to bring out the stuff that i feel uh i haven't really seen mentioned at other places and could explain why you're having some of the fitting and sewing issues and perhaps also give you some ideas on how you if you already have a like a t-shirt pattern that you love but there are some things that you could see improved. I think you will find these sections in the book especially helpful because as Marina says, it all starts with the shoulders. And of course, getting the sleeves right is also quite tricky because that also can um, like but how to take down the, the overall look of the garment if the sleeves aren't sewn, if they are tilted forwards or drag lines or things like that. So getting that shaping right, I think is really, really uh, helpful, especially if your original pattern might not have gotten everything right. This book will tell you how to fix those issues if you're running into them. Um, yeah, we really try to focus on those things that are specific to, to knitwear, to, to jersey garment, like uh, that uh, the other books that are more focused on woven, uh, maybe not uh, mentioning. And But we also, of course, talk about those really traditional, regular, fitting issues, like a full bust adjustment, for example. I actually calculated, we have uh, five different ways of uh, doing a full bust adjustment. It's like without a dart, with a dart, how to add dart, with the princess seam, and how to uh, have have a dart, but uh, not like a sewn dart, but with the small gatherings instead. So we're like, we try to cover it all, all the different types you, you can actually do. Yeah. So we spend a lot of a lot of pages on the uh, full bust adjustment and also of course a small bust adjustment so yeah, yeah because that's the tricky thing about uh, knitted patterns they don't usually have shape to it like darts for example and you may as you can't 
there's a certain point that where like you need to have darts to get a really good shape. You can't just have all the shaping and just in the side seam. You need to have some some dart or some seams, for example. That's why, for example, with your uh, cardigan, the ivy cardigan, since it has uh, seams here, you ha you have uh, basically you have a bust dart included in that seam. Um, so it's really easy to to get a nice shape. And then it's also easier to to add width and length if you want to if you want to do a full bust length adjustment on it. It's so much easier if you actually have some things because you have you have something to work with. So don't be afraid of patterns with darts or seams. They are actually easier to get a good fit on compared to the ones that doesn't have anything because those then you can only work with the, the side seams or shoulders, um, and that's it's going to be trickier. So um, seams are seams are a good thing, or and darts is uh, is actually a good thing. Yeah. So it's it, we also show, of course, if your your knit pattern doesn't have darts, we show how to add them. And and another thing, I know that some of you say, but oh, it's so difficult to sew darts on knits because they stretch and they don't behave. But don't worry. Again, we have you covered because uh, we also have very detailed sewing instructions for how to sew darts on it using both the regular sewing machine and the serger and different type of darts. Uh, so you get a lot of really awesome tips. So we spend a lot of time really making sure that we have very clear like technical illustrations so we can actually like follow step by step and um, recommendation for seams and everything. So I think you will find that really helpful as well if you're a little bit scared of starting to sew or adding and sewing darts on it there are actually ways to be successful with it. So there's two steps here. That's why we also have sewing instruction because it's both for fit and, um, and sewing. Exactly. And sometimes it can be really difficult to know, is this a fitting issue or is it a sewing issue? Especially when it comes to in the shoulder points. Is it because the neckline is too tight or the I added the stitching along it and then it becomes too tight and you get uh, drag lines? Or is it actually the shoulder slant that is uh, not correct? So, uh, so yeah, it can be about either the sewing or the fitting. So we really talk uh, talk a lot about the sewing as well, just because sometimes it's not the fitting; it's actually the sewing that is uh, that is an issue. Yeah, and we, that's why we also talk about both shoulder and neck band, how to attach those and make sure that the fabric doesn't stretch out. And I also should say, um, if you check my other videos, I have. Um, an older video where I talk about how to stabilize the fabric before you sew the shoulder seams. Because again, sometimes if the shoulders turn up too wide, it wasn't the pattern, it was the sewing because you didn't use some type of stabilizing material to keep it in shape. Because as you know, a lot of knits are quite soft and they don't always have recovery. And then they are cut slightly vertically. So when you sew, there's a big risk that the shoulder seam or the shoulder line will expand sometimes several centimeters if you're unlucky. So then you will end up with a completely different garment because you're going to be dropped shoulders <laughs> instead of ending up the shoulders. And then that will throw off the both the fit and the look of the garment. So that's why we talk about that as well. And also we have a video about that particular topic, how to stabilize um, the shoulder seams on the tops. We also have another viewer question here from Sue Natasha. What about a high round back? I have this and my t-shirt always end up shorter Length in the back as it pulls up. So I guess the, the back kind of pulls up the fabric uh, and, and the top. So what, what are your suggestions, Malena, for that? Um, on that one, I would, um, I think we have that uh, example actually in the book as well. Um, you could uh, make the inner shoulder point higher on, on the back piece only then. Um, and uh, then uh, keep it go down to zero again on the outer shoulder. So just the inner shoulder. But if um, <clears throat> If you find that that's not enough, um, I would actually recommend to start adding a back yoke seam. So then you cut across the back, basically, and then uh, then you can add shape to it. You can add length um, to the back, both on uh, like the back bottom and back yoke, like the top piece. So then you can add length um, to the back without actually doing any changes to the to the armhole. So again seams or your friend because there you can actually add the uh, add shape at length or remove length if you need it so and it could be a, a really nice detail of course also to, to have a back yoke on, uh, on a t-shirt yeah that's really really cute i also have i don't know if we have it here in the studio but 
I have a pattern that I draw for myself that I keep on using for knits, which has a yoke. And then I um, I put some gathers in, in the middle. So I get a lot of like extra ease in the back. So it falls really nice. So I put it as like, a, so you can actually add like a deep design detail. Yeah. The back piece a little bit wider. Then you just gather it or create pleats in the back. So you get this really nice, like nice higher end blouse look. But you're you're getting the comfort of wearing a knit fabric. So I, I for myself, I saw a lot of um, uh, knit tops using that method. Adding I have, I have, and also it's also if you have a fuller bust. I, I like to add. I also have so many tops where I have a front yoke like this, and then I put gathers uh, here as well. So that also adds um, more fullness to the bust area and the tummy area. But you can still get that nice fit around the shoulder. So as Marlena says, seems are your friend, and I can also give you ideas on how to add like nice design details, both creating gathers or pleats or whatever. So and that's that's such a nice way of. Um, utilizing this kind of so they don't have to be like a negative thing they have to have a joke you it might elevate your garment i think um, um excellent so yeah we were talking now tops and we're gonna see here if we we uh, we did a live on instagram before this live and then we were saying we're gonna browse through the book and give some tips and we only got to the top chapter <laughs> and now we've been going for 45 minutes but we're um but we're gonna uh we're gonna see uh, we're gonna make it make it to the end because uh of the tops which i said is about 100 pages so and also we talk a lot about raglan sleeves as well which has really mentioned because mm -hmm. that's uh, also something that uh, provides some specific fitting challenges as, as we all, all know a lot of knit pants are raglan sleeves because it's so sporty and casual and and nice so i think we have maybe 10 15 pages just on all the kind of adjustments um, when it comes to raglan. Because could you talk a little bit about one of the challenges? Because I think everyone has experienced either drag lines or folds of excess fabric when you're um, wearing uh, like um, a knit um, raglan sleeve, like a like basic style. Why um, on these kind of basic knits, why is it so hard to get the fit right in this area? Why? Yeah, I don't think, uh, I think, I don't think it's possible to have a raglan without drag lines. Like, it's not possible. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, no. Um, so imagine if you're like, um, you have the raglan uh, seam from the uh, bottom of your armhole to, to the neckline. And then you have a pattern piece for the sleeve, which is in one piece, no shape or no darts to it. And it needs to go over the shoulder. It needs to mold across the shoulder. And it can do that thanks to, I mean, the, the fabric is stretchy, but still, I mean, this is a huge 3D shape that a flat pattern needs to mold around. Of course, there are gonna be drag lines. It's not, <laughs> you, can't, uh, you can't avoid them completely. Um, so you're gonna have to live with them. Yeah. The, the benefit is though that you can actually lift up your arms really well without the whole garment uh, being lifted up. So that's why it's so popular uh, in sportswear uh, because it's really great, great movement. But uh, yeah, there are going to be drag lines. Sorry. Um, if you really want to, of course, there are things you can improve on the fit. And if you really want to work a lot and avoid them, especially if you have a little bit stiffer fabric, perhaps, um, you need to add a seam. Uh, on the whole um, sleeve, like so it becomes a two-piece sleeve because then you can add shape um, to for the shoulder or you can have a, a dart um, that will also give um, quite a good uh, good shape. But um, yeah, Raglan, whew, it's, it's <laughs> not my favorite thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you have to live with that. But we all, as Malena says, we show you how to fix a lot of these issues. and. If worse comes to worse, and you really, especially if you want to have like a more, um, I mean, if you're just wearing this kind of jersey, um, what do you call it in baseball tea, uh, baseball, yeah, yeah. baseball tea, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you may not be too concerned about having like uh, the, the sleeves might, be well, but if you're, for instance, doing like a more dressier uh, garment, maybe a dress with raglan sleeves, and everything fits beautifully, but there are some issues here. Uh, then we show in this book as well how to fix a lot of these issues. So they're definitely, as Malena says, don't 
expect miracles if you don't you have to add you have to add either um, a, a dart uh, or a seam along the way to get that beautiful shaping but there are uh, small adjustments you can do that will um, make the issue less prominent and those we show in the book so that i think you will find really helpful because sometimes it's going to be a little bit intimidating to start adding darts to knit sleeves and knit fabric and, so, and the seams. So I can totally understand why you're a little bit hesitant about doing that. Uh, so th there you have at least some options to get it to look better mm. while perhaps not perfect. <laughs> so that's why we try to re keep your expectations realistic here. <laughs> so don't expect miracles when you're sewing raglans. Um, then we have uh, another chapter which is about pants. And we all know uh, when we sew with woven fabrics, pants is usually one of the biggest headaches, right? To get the fit right. Um, knits are a little bit more uh, forgiving, but you will still run into certain issues. I can give you a good example here that we talk about, um, which is you know, a lot of knit pads, especially leggings and other, they only have um, uh, one uh, seam, the inseam, right? Yeah. So how do, that's that's something uh, that provides some challenges as well, right? Because where where do you add or remove width if if you only have this this one seam to work with? Yeah, I mean that that's that is the really tricky part because you only have on a on a leggings you only have the front and back crotch seam and you have the inseam leg inseam. So that's basically you you can only add. Um, Red shape to that. Um, so if uh, you have to have uh, here, here again, want to stress the importance of the fabric. You have to have a super stretchy four-way stretch fabric. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Like you, you can't. Um, so you have to have a stretchy fabric. Then that stretch can compensate for um, uh, for the lack of of shape in in the pattern. But uh, <clears throat> a little bit depending on on the body shape leggings without the uh, outside um, seam maybe it's not the best uh, best way to go so you can you can try to add uh, i think i think we show as well how to how to add uh, a dart uh, um, if you want to yeah exactly you can add dart if you want to make it more um shaped in, in the waist for example but it is uh, it is um, a lot trickier to get shape into uh, leggings um, and that's why uh, the fabric needs to be um, a lot more stretchier to to compensate for that. Yeah. So again, that was, we always talk about, you know, you have to pick the right fabric. Not exactly. all knits are created equal. So just because a pattern says, uh, so, so meant to be sewn with a knit fabric, it's, it's a, as we all know, I mean, you can have like a super stretchy, can be 100% stretchy, can be stretched at twice its length, some. And uh, knit fabrics are almost as stable as woven. You know, for instance, this um, raglan t-shirt, uh, raglan uh, so this is like a functional uh, fabric. As you can see, it doesn't have much stretch at all. So you have to make sure that you um, don't use a pattern that is too that is meant for negative ease, because then you will get like squeezed into it like a sausage. <laughs> and and uh, of course, the opposite. If you, for instance, if you want to sew the AV cardigan. You shouldn't use like a soft, um, supple lycra knit because then it will just hang and you won't be able to get the, the seams straight. It will become wobbly and stretch out. So again, you have to make sure that you always consider your fabric choices. And I think that's, again, the secret to success when it comes to sewing is understanding fabric and fabric properties, which we, which we talk about a lot in the book in the first chapter as well. And uh, as Marlena says, when you're sewing leggings, you, you must really work with extremely stretchy fabric because otherwise they won't be, um, you, you will have so little to work with to make adjustments because it's just a few. But we do show all the things you can do if you only have um, the inseam and the crotch uh, to work with. We do show how to do it. But yeah, it's definitely, there's some, as we talk about, keep, keep on repeating here that when you sew with knits, you're going to run into some different issues than compared to woven. So that's why we wrote this book, Fit for Knits, uh, available on most Amazon storefronts. Um, maybe Canada is still not, but it's going to happen. I, I, they usually fix it after a couple of weeks. Um, and also the ebook 
uh, you can get from my online store, shopdealerstitch.com. There's a link in this live to the book page. So you can check that out if you want to learn more about the books. Um, I'm going to see if I can share the... Uh... Like I say, we we have uh, got some reviews already. And we are so happy about it. I mean, I do a mental happy dance when I, when I read them. So we are really, really grateful um, for the reviews that we got. And it, it actually helps us a lot as well to, to reach out to, to other customers. So, so really a, a huge thank you for if you have uh, written a uh, re review. Yeah, we're extremely grateful because it's also, uh, we do everything ourselves. We didn't mention that, but it's good to know that this book is not just, by, uh, it's not just um, the content is not just created by me and Maliana. Um, I've also, I also, uh, both the publisher of the book. So I publish all my own sewing books. So to just the challenge of getting these physical copies around the world, that's a whole different story for another video. But also uh, we do all the photos and every, every page is designed by me. Um, so, and we all done, I think we've done about a thousand illustrations in this book, Valena, <laughs> between us. <laughs> so it's a lot of work. And but we're as I said, we are a small, small team of two people that have done everything. Uh, and also, I'm, I'm in a studio here, uh, where I share with uh, um, a guy, a friend of mine, and he's take took the cover photo and he's taken all, all the author photos as well. So it's very much in house <laughs> production of this book, uh, which means that outside the audience that I and Maliana have, we don't reach that many people because we don't have a marketing team or a marketing budget or <laughs> any type of budget really because <laughs> we've all blown that on trying to get the book out there so um that's why it's so helpful if you have gotten the book if you would like to do a review because that helps other people that aren't familiar with us and what we know um to also understand what the book is about and if they can find it helpful so we were beyond, beyond grateful and uh, so we're really, really happy. And also uh, so far, <laughs> of course, that's probably going to change someday, but we have only five star reviews. <laughs> Not many because we, the book was just released a couple of days ago, but this, as Malena says, has been amazing and we got some really, really fantastic reviews. So that's, uh, that means a lot. Uh, so yes, we are very, very happy to, uh, to see both that so many of you have already gotten the book and of course also that you took the time to review the book. That's, that's also incredibly, incredibly kind of you. So I keep those reviews coming. As I said, it's, it's a very important um, vehicle for us to get the book out there because we do feel that so many people sew in it today and perhaps are not able to get all this information in stored in one place. And I also want to say that in this book, you will learn things that I don't think you will learn anywhere else on, on the internet in, in this manner, at least the, the way we collected it. Because we have, as Maliana, as uh, if you're coming in later, Maliana, my co author, is a professional pattern maker that has worked for many brands and, and she has been employed by HM, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. It's a Swedish brand, we're from Sweden, uh, but HM is everywhere, basically. And uh, so you get this really, really industry behind the scenes knowledge that you won't get, you know, from other resources. So that's why it's been so wonderful to work with Malena, because we were able to merge the home sewing perspective that I come from with Malena's professional knowledge and really trying to collect that into a very easy to follow. As I, as you've probably seen already now that we've shown the book, this um, we use so much like air and, and diagrams and illustrations so even if english is not your first language i think you will have no problems following it because as you see the images are the the biggest factor because we as we know sewing is a visual thing you don't want to read about how to sew or and do pattern alteration you want to see how to do it that's why i also do videos because i think we should be more visual to make sure that we um uh, get that right uh, understanding because it's def definitely difficult otherwise if you can't see how to do things I find I find reading about sewing is, is strange <laughs> I don't know it's, I think it should be a lot of pictures if you have any of my other sewing books you know what I mean it's it's I put a lot of effort about the pictures because I feel that that's that's where we learn the most um 
It also got some really nice, uh, Trish said, I enjoy your books. Thank you both. Thank you so much, Trish. That's really wonderful to hear. Nicola says, you guys are brilliant. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you so much, Nicola. I'm going to, I forgot I could show the comments. I, sorry, I didn't do that earlier because I haven't done a, a stream in a while, so I forgot that. Um, thank you so much. Um, and Chris says, thank you both for passing all the knowledge in an easy, accessible format. That just makes me so happy to hear because that's our goal. That's been the goal of the book, trying to really simplify and demystify things that you might find a little bit tricky um, before, you know, when you see this presented in this visual format, I think a lot of it will make a lot more sense and also explain my, some of the struggles that you're having um, with sewing and, and fitting knits. Um, and uh, as I said, we have five chapters and the final chapter is about skirts. As you said, we also cover dresses, but they are covered in the um, top section. And of course, if you have skirt issues, you will, you, you know, there are just a few things that are uh, specific for a dress. Otherwise, there are other covered in the top uh, or the skirt section. So if you if you wonder about that, so again, we show everything here that you need to do when you're fitting um, skirts. So um, and also, if you need to add darts, which is another thing that you might be able to um, might you might need. And I should also say, because um, also getting the waist. Can be tricky when you're sewing pants and knits because there are lots of different options to choose from so we also show um different ways of adding waist finishes so if you want to have a flat waist or you want to have a waistband you want to have casing all these things we also show in this book so you can definitely i think even even if you maybe get the book for uh, pattern alterations or pattern fitting I think you will get a lot of really nice, like aha moments from the sewing that we share as well, because as Marlena says, it's very much intertwined with fit. And and again, a lot of traditional sewing books, like old school sewing books that I really like, they are wonderful, but they don't really talk about sewing with stretchy fabric. So uh, we try to make that kind of similar. If you know, you're familiar with the Reader's Digest books and similar, we try to use the same, um, the same format for the instructions with very like as you can see very clear technical illustrations like this so it's, it's gonna so hopefully it will be very easy for you to follow um yes uh, uh and so natasha said just after my christmas list hope santa is kind to you <laughs> fingers crossed that's wonderful to hear uh again if you check the description of this video, you will find a link to the book page. And there you can find uh, all the vendors that I know currently that are stocking it. Um, if you are in Sweden, you might run into getting some, <laughs> getting, having some issues or in Scandinavia because we sold out. <laughs> we sold out the copies in one day. <laughs> because normally my, my sewing books usually do well in other countries because they're in English. Uh, so I didn't expect that the uh, Swedish distributor would have um, gotten so many orders. So uh, we, that we were clear. So just, uh, but you will find one Erika C screen. She still has some books, and she is linked in the, um, the list of the sellers. Um, so uh, uh, oh, we, we have another. We have one more sewing questions here as well from Gail. Uh, hi, I have a question. My fit problem is that the shoulder area is too wide and my bra, bra strap show. Do you address this in the book? Um, yeah, I mean, we talk a lot about uh, <clears throat> like too wide shoulders, too narrow shoulders and what to, what to do, um, how to how to adjust that. And that can also be just w when you talk about the bra strap, that could also be a little bit with a slant, uh, how the shoulder is slanting. Um, so that one we also... Uh, um talk about uh, like if you have very straight shoulders or very very slanting shoulders so that um affects uh, affects the fit as well so yeah we talk a lot about shoulders i was actually looking yeah. through the book today and was like yeah there's a lot of shoulder here but uh, again as i said earlier if you get the fit right here you will have uh, you come a long way um uh, because here it's it's balance is in the shoulders so uh, i i totally can understand if uh, people have uh, a lot of feeding issues um in shoulder area because yeah. it's it's super important to get to get that that one right yeah 
Very, very true. And also, sometimes as we mentioned, sometimes the fabric can get stretched out as well, which can also cause the, the bra stop to show. Uh, for instance, if the neck bands expands more than it's supposed to do, again, you will have that issue. I'm not, not saying that it's your issue here, Gail, but that's also really good to know. So that's why we also have very detailed instructions for how to uh, add the neck band to a knit top to make sure that it doesn't stretch out and it doesn't show more than it's supposed to show. And also, uh, we also have some suggestions. If the, the neckline has grown too much, there are some fixes you can do. We might not solve it 100%, but we also show some quick tips here and, and also how to, to avoid that in the future. So there can be lots of reasons why everything grows, both the fit and also because the fabric at the shoulder seam will stretch out when you sew, and also the neckline. So we, you, maybe it's a combination of different things, and sometimes some fabrics are very, has very little recovery, so they also tend to grow. So that's uh, why it's, uh, sometimes it's a little bit complex with knits because it, they have a will of their own. They're very uncontrollable in some ways. Yeah, <laughs> that's and that's, uh, with woven, it's a little bit easier to make a toile or like a mock-up or uh, you can just uh, have uh, any woven fabric. But with knit, if you want to do, um, I all, of course, I strongly recommend to do uh, like a mock-up or a test sample, you kind of have to use very similar fabric uh, because the stretch affects it so much um, so if you use a completely different fabric with that has a completely different stretch and behave in another way it's not gonna you're not gonna get an accurate result from that uh, test garment unfortunately so um, so yeah um, that's um, you need to have a very very similar garment um, fabric if you uh, do a test garment it's very important. I guess that's very, very true in all cases, you know. That the fabric is everything. It all starts with the fabric, right? That's a secret. Yes, yes. <laughs> Success, I think. Uh, we also have Cecilia, Sianilson. We got the book this Monday. Love it. Thank you so much. That's, that's mm. extremely validating to hear. Cecilia is a long-time viewer as well. That means so much. Thank you so much. Um, Yes, uh, I think we said we're going to try to do to keep this about an hour, and I think we managed to do that a little bit more. Uh, I hope that you enjoy this live and that you found some nuggets um, that will help your sewing and fitting knits, makes them easier. Um, and uh, again, if you want to get the book, there is information in the description section on where to find it, both the print and the ebook version. And you can also um, if you want to sew one of my patterns, I've also now created pattern bundles, so you can actually get uh, the book, the ebook, and the pattern as a bundle at a reduced price. So you can get both, because so, as um, we said previously, the AV cardigan, one of my sewing patterns, has a princess seam here, so that makes it also really easy to adjust for your bust if you need to make adjustment there. Um, so that's a good combination, I think, if you want to both test some of my patterns and you will also get the book and then you get, it's, they really complement each other really, really well. Um, so I just want to say a big thank you for watching us uh, tonight. And I hope we will talk again, not too, not too long, how do you say? hopefully not too far away. Um, and uh, do you want to have some final words, Malena, that you want to say to our audience here tonight? Oh, it's been really, really great to uh, chatting with you. And um, yeah, I, I totally agree. We, we should do this again. Yeah. I totally agree. So thank you so much and have a great evening and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.